Students, let's discuss a very important concept uh, that is the concept of spontaneous generation of life. The theory of spontaneous generation of life or the concept of abiogenesis or we can also call it as autobiogenesis. So the theory of uh, spontaneous generation of life or the theory of abiogenesis can also be called as autobiogenesis. <clears throat> now let's understand what is the basic uh, crux or what's the basic theme of this theory. This theory was believed by many of the scientists, some of the main scientists uh, of the earliest times are the thinkers of the earliest times who believed in this theory are as it is the Anaximander, Anaximander, Xenophanus, Plato, Aristotle, Epicurus, Thales, etc. These are some of the main uh, thinkers of the earliest times who believed in the theory of autobiogenesis or in the theory of abiogenesis. So the main thinkers who believed in this theory are Anaximander, uh, Xenophanes, Plato, Thales, Epicurus, Aristotle and many others. Now what was the belief of these thinkers? These thinkers believed that understand conditions, understand particular conditions, the non-living matter has given origin to the first living beings on this planet. So these believed that understand circumstances, the non-living matter has spontaneously given origin to the living beings present upon this planet. And this concept in nutshell is known as the theory of spontaneous generation of the life or the theory of autobiogenesis or the theory of abiogenesis. For example, we will talk about <coughs> Anaximander. Anaximander believed that the living animals are formed from the mud once it is warmed by the, uh, these uh, sun rays. Once the solar energy uh, or once the sunlight falls upon the mud, the mud gives rise to uh, many living organisms. Although this belief is baseless, but I am talking about what these uh, earliest thinkers believed. So an examiner believed that it is the mud when it is warm, uh, warmed by the sunlight, uh, many of the living beings are formed from the uh, this uh, mud which is warmed by the sunlight. Similarly, many other uh, believers like the Aristotle. Aristotle believed that the plants do, uh, they come uh, out from the soil or uh, they are born out of the soil. This was the uh, concept in which the Aristotle believed. And similarly many other biologists believed that the snails uh, and the worms, they are the products of the petrification or they come out from the products of the petrification uh, etc etc so in nutshell we say that this theory believes that the living organisms have came into origin <coughs> from the non-living matter spontaneously and this is the main concept in the theory of abiogenesis so again we say that abiogenesis or autobiogenesis or the theory of spontaneous generation of life it advocates the concept that understands special conditions, the non-living matter has given origin to the first living beings spontaneously. Now we shall uh, deal uh, with this theory in detail. One more uh, uh, thinker came to the, uh, what we call as, uh, uh, one more thinker, uh, came in the support of the theory of abiogenesis and the thinker is von Helmut. So 
So the thinker is Von Helmuth. Von Helmuth also believe, was a staunch believe, believer of uh, autobiogenesis. He believed that life came into existence from non-living matter spontaneously under special circumstances and he tried to repeat an experiment. He kept his uh, sweatful shirt or he kept his dirty shirt and he kept uh, some wheat and the wheat barn in it and kept it in dark in a cupboard for about 21 days. And later on he found that after 21 days, um, uh, he believed that after 21 days mice was formed from this uh, what we call as the wheat bran, wheat and the sweatful shirt. So he believed that he kept uh, he kept in a cupboard, he kept in it a uh, sweat, sweatful shirt sweatful shirt he kept in a uh, this cupboard and he also kept in the cupboard along with this uh, uh, wrapped in this uh, this dirty shirt he kept some wheat and wheat barn wheat brown wheat brown and some uh, wheat uh, he kept uh, wrapped in the uh, this uh, sweat uh, dirty shirt sweatful dirty shirt and after keeping it in dark for about 21 days he opened the cupboard and uh, he saw a rat there and he believed that the rat has basically originated from this uh, uh, sweatful uh, dirty shirt and the, uh, the what we call as the wheat bran and the wheat. Although it was a coincidence the uh, rat or the mice maybe uh, may ha might have been present at that time in the cupboard but he jumped to the conclusion that this mice has been formed from the wheat bran and the sweatful shirt so he tried to uh, support the theory of abiogenesis experimentally although uh, it is totally baseless <coughs> the concept uh, and the idea of uh, uh, von Helmuth was totally baseless but he tried to support this theory in nutshell he also believed in this theory so the man believers have already discussed uh, in this theory where Aristotle, Plato, Epicurus, Anaximander, Thales and uh, von Helmuth so all these uh, uh, thinkers believed that life came into existence uh, under sp some special uh, uh, conditions from the uh, non-living matter spontaneously and this concept uh, is what we call as the theory of abiogenesis or the theory of autobiogenesis. Now <clears throat> there is a great contradiction which was created by this theory and many of them uh, what we call as uh, biologists came to explain that this theory is baseless and it is illogical and unscientific among these people you will see three main scientists came one was the Francisco Reddy Francisco Reddy in 1668 Francisco Reddy was the first <coughs> scientist who challenged the theory of autobiogenesis and the concepts of von Helmuth experimentally. He carried out an experiment by which he disproved, disproved the concept of uh, autobiogenesis or abiogenesis. Now what basically uh, this uh, Francisco Reddy did? Francisco Reddy uh, kept uh, meat uh, in a jar and the jar was uh, covered by a clear muslin cloth. So this is a jar. In this jar, he kept uh, meat, or some believe he kept uh, the uh, flesh of eel in this, whatever it be. So, this is the jar <coughs> which was used by uh, this uh, Francisco Reddy to disprove the concept of abiogenesis. He kept in the jar uh, some meat and once he kept in the jar meat, he sealed the uh, jar by a uh, muslin cloth. So this jar was sealed by muslin cloth. He sealed the jar so that if, if the flies come, they will not get entry into this area where the meat is present. That is why he sealed the jar. And after a few days, or after a few, uh, what we call, after a week, he opened this, uh, uh, he opened this jar, and 
once you open it, the muslin cloth, he found upon the muslin cloth, there are some, uh, these eggs. He found upon the muslin cloth that there are some eggs of the, uh, these flies. So the flies have came and they have laid their eggs upon uh, this muslin cloth because they were not allowed to enter the jar due to the blockage of the jar by the muslin cloth. So no trace of life, no living organism, no microorganism was found in this jar in the meat and it was totally devoid of the life which means that the concept of abiogenesis is totally illogical and it is totally baseless. So if the life uh, as is believed by the uh, these uh, propounders of the theory of abiogenesis, if the life comes into existence from the non-living matter, then why over here the non-living matter, the flesh has not given rise or the meat has not given rise to any of the living organism. So this was the first blow to the theory of autobiogenesis or the theory of uh, uh, spontaneous generation of the life. So the experiment of uh, this um, Francisco Reddy puts a big question mark to the theory of the autobiogenesis and uh, it totally uh, what we call as failed to provide answers to the questions which were posed by the Fresco Reddy and his experiment. After that another uh, scientist came who is known as Lazaro Saplanzeri. Lazaro Saplanzeri. Lazarus Saplanzini in 1767 came and he also experimentally proved that the theory of abiogenesis is nothing than an, uh, nothing, uh, than an illogical uh, theory and a baseless theory. So, Francisco Reddy, uh, uh, after Francisco Reddy, Lazarus Saplanzini, Lazarus Saplanzini, also uh, challenged this theory by his experiment. What Lazarus Splenzini did, Lazarus Splenzini also uh, bought a jar and he kept in the jar he kept in the jar cooked meat. Some believe that he kept in the jar <clears throat> this uh, cooked vegetables but whatever it be the main idea is over here to understand that life doesn't came uh, life doesn't uh, originated from the non-living matter spontaneously so once he kept over here <clears throat> this cooked uh, meat he also sealed the jar so he kept the cooked meat in the jar and after that he sealed the jar and once he sealed the jar you will see again the flies came and the flies laid their eggs upon the <coughs> jar but as the jar was sealed the eggs didn't gain an entry uh, in this very area where the meat is present neither the flies uh, had a chance of visiting the cooked meat. So the meat was cooked to ensure that no living organism is present in the meat, if some living organism, some microbe or microorganism is present in the meat, that might have been eliminated by the cooking. So, once the jar was covered, it was sealed and it was found that no living organism was found in this meat or in this jar. Once the seal of this jar was opened after uh, after a couple of days and once the <coughs> seal of the jar was opened you will see and it was left uncovered for some days when it was left uncovered for some days the flies visited uh, the jar and they gathered the entry in this area where the meat is present uh, and they laid, laid their eggs upon this cooked meat and the eggs developed into the small larvae of the flies which we call as maggots. So this also disproves the uh, concept of autobiogenesis. So we say that Lazarus Aplanzani carried out his experiment in which he sealed a jar in which he kept the cooked 
uh, meat or cooked vegetables and after a few days he opened the jar there was no sign of life in the jar there was no microbe no organism was found in the jar but when he opened the jar and kept the jar uncovered for few days he found that in the jar there are maggots which are basically the larvae which developed from the eggs of the flies as the jar was left uncovered the flies visited the jar and they laid their eggs there which developed into the maggots so this experiment uh, it first of all disproves the concept of autobiogenesis and furthermore it proves the concept that the life doesn't come in, came into existence from the non-living matter rather the life came into existence from the already existing life this concept is what we call as omnis uh, vivum e vivum this concept is known as omni vivum so this is the concept uh, which was put forth after the experiment of the Lazarus Planzini, which means uh, omni vivum e vivo. It means life came into existence from already existing life. But this dictum also doesn't solve the problem why from the first life came into existence it believes that the life came into existence from the pre-existing life as the maggots developed from the eggs which were laid by the flies so the maggots developed from the flies which means that the life comes into existence from the pre-existing life which is uh, known as uh, omnivivum e vivo so it means that life came into existence from the pre-existing life so we conclude that the experiment of the Lazarus Planzini was also a blow upon the theory of autobiogenesis and this uh, experiment also disproved the concept of autobiogenesis and it was another blow to the concept of autobiogenesis finally we shall discuss the experiment of Louis Posture who has done a lot of work in the microbiology. Louis Pasteur also came <coughs> with an experiment which disproves the concept of autobiogenesis. So it is Louis Pasteur which in <coughs> 1867 carried out an experiment uh, which puts many questions to the theory of autobiogenesis and it is also a blow to the theory of autobiogenesis and by this experiment uh, the theory of autobiogenesis was totally disproved so what Louis Pasteur did Louis Pasteur basically uh, he bought seven naked flasks in his laboratory this is a flask and this is the seven neck of the flask this is seven naked flask so he carried the experiment using seven naked flasks this is sometimes asked in the neat examination who carried out an experiment to, to, to disprove the theory of autobiogenesis by using seven naked flasks? The answer is Louis Pasteur. So Louis Pasteur was a scientist who used the seven naked flasks to uh, carry out an experiment which disproved the theory of autobiogenesis or the abiogenesis. So what he did in the seven naked flasks? He kept some meat in the seven naked flasks. So this is the meat. He kept the meat in the seven naked flasks and left the seven naked flasks open. So when he left the seven naked flask open, you will see the air moves into the seven naked flask over here. But the pathogens are the microbes present in the ear. They didn't gain an entry into this. Uh, what we call as this area where the meat is present. So he had moved through this seven acre flask and uh, went to this area where the meat is present but the uh, what we call as the microbes present in the ear or some other microbes or living organs present in the ear they didn't gain an entry into this area where the meat is present. So 
After some time, he broke the uh, after some time he broke the neck of this plasac and examined this uh, meat and found that no sign of life was found in this meat or no living organism was found in this meat and he believed that life doesn't come into existence from non-living matter spontaneously. After uh, that, when he broke the uh, swine neck of this flask, he kept the flask open for some days and after some days when he kept the flask now open after breaking its swine neck for some days he again examined the meat present in the uh, this swine neck and flask of which the neck was broken and once he uh, for the second time examined the meat present in the swine neck uh, swine flask he found that some microbes or some microorganisms were present in this meat and he believed that now after breaking the neck of the flask the living organisms or the uh, microbes present in the ear have gained now entry into this area where the meat is present and they have developed into their living organisms so by uh, the, by <coughs> explaining all these three uh, experiments uh, one by the uh, french corridi another by the lazarus saplanzini and lastly by the louis posture uh, we can draw the conclusion that life doesn't come into origin from the, uh, this non-living matter spontaneously but rather life uh, originated already from the pre-existing life which is the concept of omnivivum e vivo but this doesn't solve the question that as to why from the first life came into existence the question that as to how and why and when the first life came into existence, the question still remains unsolved and the theory of autobiogenesis has no answers to explain in clear terms as to how the life originated and the three scientists who disproved the theory of the abiogenesis that is the Francisco Reddy, Lazarus Saplanzini and Louis Posture they also don't have answers to explain as to how the life came into origin and from what the life came into origin uh, but they only did one thing that is they disproved the concept of uh, this uh, autobiogenesis and they gave another concept uh, that life came into existence from already existing life which we call as omnivivum e vivo but they failed to uh, provide the answer to the question as to why from the first life came into existence uh, the answer to this question is provided by one more theory which we shall be discussing in the next lecture which we call as the operian haladian theory or the theory of biochemical origin of the life